Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is finished. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Give the Lord a big hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Tim, as always. Great job opening. Thank you, Roberto and the worship team. Praise the Lord. Thank all of you. Amen for your testimonies, for your prayers. Amen for your faith. Amen in what God is doing. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. And the Sunday school young ones, if there are any, can do whatever you usually do. Praise the Lord. Suzanne. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a little warm in here this morning, but uh, it is running now. Praise the Lord. I, I set it and reset it, and I don't know what the deal was, but thank God somebody here does. Praise the Lord. But I did feel like it was good. There was some cooler air coming. We just, if, we, if we make the service last a long time, it may cool down before you get out of here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, happy Father's Day, all of you. Amen, fathers. Uh, we, we want the Lord to bless you today. It was a great day. Amen. And uh, I believe that our Heavenly Father yes. likes our fathers. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise God. Amen. So I got a uh, Father's Day thing. Uh, let me just say this. I, I like puns, but don't send me bird puns. Two can play at that game. See the headline this morning? A short psychic escape prison. The, head, the lead in was small, medium, at large. Yeah. <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. Y'all in a bad mood or something? Praise God. Those were really good, I thought. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, God is good. We'll get right to the Word of God this morning. Praise the Lord. I want to start, uh, Peter, I want to start with Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 through 20. Colossians 2, 16 through 20. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Yes. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands have nourishment, ministered and knit together, increases with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? All right, and then I'd like to go to Hebrews chapter 10, and we'll read verses 1 through 5. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 10, 1 through 5. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I, I feel like the uh, kind of going along with some of the things that I was talking about last week, but I, there's a powerful truth, amen, uh, in, in the church that I believe the Holy Spirit is really wanting us to embrace. Now, I know we talk about it a lot, but I'm going to say some things this morning maybe that I haven't said uh, quite as clearly, but I'm telling you, God wants us without a sin conscious. Amen. What we just read tells us that. 
that alone would tell you that this is about Jesus and not about us anymore. Right. Praise the Lord. So as long as we have a consciousness of sin, we are not operating as Christ. Right. How many of you know Jesus had no sin? Right. He didn't have a conscience of sin because he never sinned. We have been born again in his likeness. Amen. We are not to have a consciousness of sin because if we do, we end up acting out of that. Praise the Lord. So, uh, just in Hebrews chapter 10, it's really, if you, ever, you take the time to read that chapter, it's obviously the book of Hebrews is written to Hebrews. Right. It was written to the Jews, amen. Right. And the Hebrews chapter 10 is about Jews crossing out of spiritual bondage and into the finished work of Christ. They were struggling with it. In fact, we saw it all through the, the, the early church. Uh, battling about laws and rules and regulations. Even Peter and Paul got into it over whether Gentiles should be circumcised after they became believers. So it wasn't a new thing, and it, and it certainly hasn't gone away because we're still struggling with it in the church today two, over 2,000 years later. Amen? And that was not the intent of God, and nor the intent of God in the flesh when He came. Praise the Lord. It was to deliver us from this sin consciousness, from this keeping of rules that we could fail at, and then become guilty or ashamed or diminished, amen, in our ability to do what God had put us here to do, amen? So they, they, this whole uh, chapter 10 is about the, a spiritual truth relative to a physical truth that took place back in the book of Joshua, amen, when they, when they crossed out of, uh, amen, the, the wilderness and into the promised land. So this is really what's happening here. It's just kind of a... a a, a truth of what that shadow was showing us. Amen. Now he tells us that everything under that old covenant was types and shadows. They were all pointing to a greater spiritual truth. Amen. And so that's what we're dealing with here in Hebrews 10 is the Jews crossing out of spiritual bondage and into the finished work of Christ. Amen. Now, when you come to Hebrews 11, now he starts, and I believe the, 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 the writer of the book of Hebrews is Paul. There's debate about it. Who cares? I think it was Paul. That's all I really care about. Amen. And so he, here in Hebrews 11, he starts out that telling these Hebrews, these Jews, that their heroes or their elders is the way it's written, amen, of faith are to inspire them to enter into faith or enter into the new covenant, amen, of grace. That's really what it's all about. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verses 1 and 2. So now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. All right, so everything these heroes or these elders did or built was a picture of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Yes. The substance, not the shadow. Yes. Amen? Now faith, substance, is Jesus Christ. Yes. Now faith, amen? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is... The substance is Jesus. Yes. Amen. That's where our faith is in. That's what our faith is in. Not in me. Not in what I can do or can't do. What, what, what I think is demanded of me to do. But my faith is in the substance. And the substance is Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Faith, substance, is Jesus. Amen. Yes. So now let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. My faith isn't in rules. My faith isn't in the law. My faith is in the substance of all, what all of that stuff was pointing to. Yes. Jesus. Yes. So wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Yes. What is beset? It means to attack from all sides or to harass or besiege. Yes. Okay? So he says, let's, let's uh, come against this. He said, let's lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily harass us and en en yes. engulf us and besiege us, amen, yes. and attack us from every direction. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise the Lord. The sin that so easily besets us is to go back to the law. Yes. Yes. To go back to rules and regulations. That's the thing that will harass you. That's the thing that will overwhelm you. That's yes. the thing that will attack you from all sides. Amen. 
Look unto Jesus. So what's the answer, amen? How do you overcome the besetting sin? You look to Jesus. You look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, amen, of our faith. The substance of our faith. Praise the Lord. Amen. Remember when Jesus, uh, uh, well, actually, look. Go, let's go back to the Jews. When the Jews were, were to cross over from physical bondage into the promised land, what happened? Well, before they went, they sent out spies, which God never told them to do. He just told them to go take the land. But they thought, we'll check it out first, just to be safe. So they sent spies. The spies came back and get it. I mean, the spies come back and they've got two guys are carrying a cluster of grapes. The grapes were huge. Amen. They said they were, there were huge houses over there. There's mansions over there. But there's giants in the land. God wanted to give them giant food. God wanted to give them giant houses. Stuff bigger than they needed. Things more than what they had to have. He wanted to give them all this stuff. He, he had the giants in the land for a reason. Bigger vineyards. Bigger houses. Bigger food. Everything was bigger. Everything was giant sized. Amen. Giant house. More than enough is what I'm trying to say. Amen. God wants to give us giant life. He wants to give us abundant life. Amen. A life that's greater than you can imagine. More than you can think. Praise the Lord. Jesus is a giant house. Hallelujah. Jesus is giant food. Eat my flesh. Amen. Drink my blood. Amen. Jesus is giant food for us. We are not grasshoppers. We are more than conquerors. We are giants. Hallelujah. In the land. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 16 through 20. Ephesians 3, 16 through 20. That He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's giant power. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's exceeding abundance. Hallelujah. Yes. So my prayer this morning is that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened that we may be able to behold him. Amen. It's a greater and a fuller revelation of Christ that I believe the church really needs. The greatest need of the church today is to really behold the greatness, the, 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 the hugeness, amen, the powerfulness of Christ that's in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 9, uh, 3, back up to verses uh, 9 through 12. Ephesians 3, 9 through 12. Praise the Lord. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Yes. Praise the Lord. So when we completely embrace, amen, Christ, when we completely receive this, you know, totally in our minds, our hearts, and completely embrace it, and His sacrifice, when we do this in faith or do it with trust, amen, we'll understand that He has already walked through judgment, praise the Lord, to satisfy the penalty for humanity's sins. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hebrews 4, 11 through 16. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, which is what I just was talking about. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. He's talking about what the Jews did not accomplish. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. 
Praise the Lord. The rest that, that remains is to enter in to the work that Jesus finished on the cross. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. God, who at sundry times and divers manners spake in times past to, unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus didn't come to make more promises. He came to fulfill every promise. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. The promises are fulfilled. Yes. It's just a question of whether or not we can believe it in order to receive it. Right. All right. Look at 1 John. 1 John now, chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. <clears throat> Little children, it's the last time. And as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. And even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. Praise the Lord. The Antichrist wasn't someone coming in the future, amen, but he was a present reality then and now. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. John wasn't addressing some future problem of an individual Antichrist. But he was speaking about Israel in general. They weren't anti-God. But for the most part, they were definitely anti-Christ. Yes. They didn't experience the indwelling Christ. They only experienced the external law of Moses. Yes. Praise the Lord. Romans 1.17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just, or those that are justified will live by faith. Praise the Lord. They didn't live by faith because they had rules to keep. We don't have any rules anymore, so we live by faith and that's how we justify, that's how we show that we are justified. That's how we let people understand that we are righteous now. Not because of what we do, but because of who we are. We do it by faith. If you try to do it by rules, you're going to get very frustrated. You have to do this by faith. You have to just believe that Jesus is the substance of our faith. He's the substance of what we believe, why we believe. He took all of our sin. He purged us from our sin. Amen. And if you really believe you've been made righteous, and that's who you are, the righteousness of God in the earth, then you'll walk by faith and not by sight. Praise the Lord. Because your sight will kill you. I mean, what you can see will give you a heart attack. I mean, it'll, it'll freak you out. It'll, it'll cause you to be depressed and bummed out and, and fearful and everything else. Amen. amen. But it's uh, what you can't see, amen, is where the power is. Right. And that's living by faith. That's living by the finished work of Christ. Right. See, the sad thing is that a lot of what is being taught in the church today hasn't made believers of us. But it's made unbelievers. Sin consciousness is rampant. Yes, it is. See it all the time. Every people I talk to, all it's always an issue. Yes. See, we're still dealing with people today who insist that the gospel be rule based. Yep. Legalists, they want to promote regulations yep. instead of the life of Christ. Right. We have Christ in us. Amen. Yes, See, they're pro God. But they're antichrist. Whoa, 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 what are you saying? I'm saying if you don't believe that Jesus finished this, then you're antichrist. You're still focused on the God of the old covenant, amen, demanding of you when he came in the flesh and paid the price for everything so you don't have to live up to any standard, amen. You just believe. And out of that belief, out of that faith, will flow righteousness yes. eventually. Yes. And the reason we see it sporadic is because 
we're double-minded. Sometimes we're believing totally I'm everything Jesus said and I'm, I got it all and I'm, I'm saved, I'm delivered, I'm good, hallelujah. But then I screw up somewhere, I do something I probably shouldn't have done, amen. And what happens? Yeah. Condemnation. I got to fix this. Yeah. Well, let me say this. God finished the sin thing between Him and me. Yes. There is no more sin for me That's right. for God to judge. Amen? But when I sin, I sin against you. My sin isn't against God anymore because God's already dealt with all of my sin. The problem I have is I sin against my wife or I'll sin against Toby or I'll sin against, You know what I, mean, what I mean? I'll be mad. I'll get upset. I'll lie. I'll do this. I'll do the other. I'll, I'll, I'll get in an argument. I'll get all freaked out and get upset and get uptight and I'll blow it all. Amen? But it's not against God because God's already settled my issue with Him. The problem is I'm screwing up everything with the people that are around me. Because I don't realize I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And so I'm, I'm fearful. I'm anxious. I'm, I'm protective. And every time somebody does something, oh, I wonder what that was all about. Why did they say that? Why did they say it that way? Why did they look at me like that? You see what I'm saying? Yes. I don't have a problem with sin as far as God's concerned. He doesn't see any sin in my life. He says I am perfect. I am just as Christ. Yes. The problem is she doesn't see that. Right. Amen? Right. Our sin is not, God is not dealing with our sin. Right. He's already dealt with our sin if we are believers. Jesus. The problem with sin is it affects people on this level. Yes. In this life you'll have tribulation. Yes. So I don't care what you're screwing up. If you're a believer, you're going to heaven. That's right. The problem is you've got a lot of hell going on right here because right. of the sin that's going this way, not the sin that goes that way. Right. That sin's been dealt with. But it's how we interact with others. That's why he said, here's the great commandment. Love one another. Yes. Then you'll fulfill all the law. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Just love them. Just forgive them. Just forget it. Yes. God did it for you. He's asking us to do the same thing. You, if we don't believe this, church, we're going to struggle for another 2,000 years. Yes. That's why it's settled. It is finished. Everything between me and God is good. No matter what I do tomorrow, everything between me and God is still good. It may not be good between my wife and I tomorrow if I do something ignorant, but it will still be good between me and God. And the more I realize how good it is between me and God, the more likely I am to not do things that are going to be ungodly to my wife or to somebody else or whatever. <laughs> Are you with me? But see, this is supposed to be liberating. It's supposed to be setting us free in what it's done. We have just incorporated all these rules and regulations and been anti-Christ and ended up with a big mess and wondering why. We're freaking out about some boogeyman coming in the future somewhere and the Antichrist is right here. We met the enemy and he's us. No weapon formed against me can prosper. I'm not worried about no Antichrist. I'm worried about the Antichrist that i got to deal with right here that doesn't believe, amen, that Christ has finished everything in my life and made me perfect and righteous in the eyes of God. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Whew. That was exciting. Praise the Lord. Antichrist. So we've got to understand the Mosaic Law was written to the Adamic humanity. Amen? Unregenerated. It was given to Adam so that he would behave. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. It was given for the lawless. Right. For the unregenerate. All of those that were under the old covenant. Right. The old creation. That's who the law was given to. Yep. The new covenant or the gospel is written to new creatures in Christ. Yes. Born again people. Yes. Righteousness of God people. Amen? So if you ask church people, if you ask religious people what they believe most of, they would generally tell you what they don't believe in. Oh, we don't believe in that. We don't believe in chewing and drinking, smoking, movies, you know, rap music, pick a Pick a subject that you know irritates you and you can make it a sin pretty quick. Right. 
And it's mostly because what they hear is what is denied and what is condemned. Praise the Lord. If you leave a church service with a bunch of stuff to do, you probably didn't hear the gospel. If you leave with something to believe in, something that affirms you, you probably heard good news. This is prophecy. And all prophecy is supposed to edify. It's supposed to lift up. It's supposed to encourage. Amen? Praise God. If you believe you're worthy, if you believe you're the righteousness of God, that's what you'll act on. That's what Paul said. He said, I was fine until I got heard the law about covetousness, and then all of a sudden I became the biggest coveter around. Sin conscious. Got it on my mind. I'm thinking about it. Pretty soon I'm doing it. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 27. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Don and I just briefly talked about that last Sunday after church. What's he saying? He's saying we didn't do anything to get spotless or without blemish. It's what he did to make us that way. So that he could present it to himself perfect. He might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. If you're born again, you're part of the body of Christ. You are the church. You are the bride of Christ. And you have a spotless, blemishless, holy, righteous reality. That's what God said. And that's all that really matters. I mean, I don't care what everybody else thinks. I, I care about what some people think, but I don't care about what everybody thinks. I, if I know what God thinks, and that's good, I can deal with the rest of it. Praise the Lord. So through giving himself in death, Jesus has purged the church, and we are holy. We're not getting holy. We're not someday going to be holy. We are holy and have been holy ever since we got born again. Yes. We are spotless. We are without blemish. Yes. And I know that you can look at me and see my life and say, well, that's, that's not true. You don't look at things as though they are. You look at things that are not as though they are. Praise the Lord. You, you speak to what the Word of God says, and that's what you declare. Because that's the reality. Yes. We walk by faith, yes. not by sight. If you're walking by sight, you're frustrated. You're depressed. You're bummed out and you feel like a failure. Because I've done a lot of walking that way. All right, Colossians chapter 2. And I want to read verses 6 through 15, Peter. Colossians 2, 6 through 15. And then this very first verse, look at this. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. How did you receive Him? You just believed. Now that's how you got it. That's how you live it. There is something else. Well, hey, come on. This is good news. This is the good news. This is the gospel. And I mean, if we can ever, that's what I'm saying, if we could ever really believe this, really get it down into us so where our sin-conscious mind can't mess with us, I'm telling you, you'll live a life of abundance. You'll be so happy. You'll be so full. You'll live giant life. Yes. Praise the Lord. It'll be great. Praise the Lord. Because you won't be depressed. You won't, people won't be able to get you down and, and upset you and irritate you and aggravate you and, and mess with your mansion. Praise the Lord. Rooted and built up in Him. Established in the faith as you have been taught. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. I mean, there's a lot of unthankful, uh, miserable people in church. They don't have, they're not thank you. Tim talks about it every service when he opens. 
Father, well, just thank God. For, I mean, I don't know what's going on in your life, but God says you're good with Him. That's something to be thankful about. Praise the Lord. There's always good things coming if you just believe it. Praise the Lord. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. That's religion. Mess you up and be deceit. Amen. After the traditions of men. After the rudiments of the world. What's the rudiments of the world? Work hard, get a lot. Get them first before they get you. Amen? And not after Christ. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in Him which is the head of all principality and power. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body and the sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Your sins were all cut off. Praise the Lord. They're dead. It's dead meat. It's gone. Yes. Praise the Lord. Buried with Him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised Him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath He quickened together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Yes. Hallelujah. That's shouting stuff right there. All of your trespasses. Praise the Lord. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, the law, the rules. He blotted them out. They don't even exist for us. That was against us. They were what condemned us because we couldn't do them. Which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to His cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, He made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 54, verse 17. I got a haircut, and now my glasses won't stay on. That's what you get. Praise the Lord. Could turn out to be the most expensive haircut I ever got if I have to buy more glasses. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. It's not mine. It's His that has been imputed to me. Yes. Praise the Lord. In Christ, uh, Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation. God is not dealing with sin anymore. Not for the believer. He has settled the sin issue. Yes. Sin's not on God's mind. It's only on ours. Yeah. Because we're getting told about it all the time. Yeah. We're getting threatened with what God's going to do because of that thing you did or didn't do or yeah. thought about or whatever. Yeah. See, sin consciousness isn't just you know feeling bad after you do something stupid. Sin consciousness is who you believe yourself to be. Yes, that's right. That's why this is critical. That's why it, Paul taught it so uh, extremely that people said, well, you're telling people they can sin. Well, it's almost an oxymoron to tell people they can sin when they can't sin. <laughs> you know? I mean, you could sin against each other. We could sin against each other and have issues. But I can't sin against God anymore. That is dead. It's been cut off. It's, it's blotted out. It doesn't exist. My problem is not with God. My problem is with people. It's like the guy said, you know, I love pastor. I just hate people. I didn't say that. I'm quoting somebody else. Somebody else said that. But you know, you know what I'm saying. I, see, God, it's all good with God. The problem is here. The horizontal stuff. Hebrews 10, verse 1. You know, I mean, we can't do anything without thinking. Just a fact. So if your thinking is messed up, what you do is going to be messed up. Right? That's why we have to renew our mind to this truth. If we really understand this, behavior will take care of itself eventually. Right? Because I'm not trying to prove anything to God. I'm just trying to love 
the people that I interact with, the people that I live with, the people that I'm around. Yes. So God's, Jesus said, that's the law. That's, that's what you got. Just love one another. Yeah. Love them the way I love you. In other words, give them a pass every once in a while. Give them a break. Yeah. Amen. We don't need to fix everybody. I mean, come on, we, we struggle with fixing ourselves, and that's the problem, right. that we project that onto other people because we're not perfect. Right. We think we're supposed to be, and because we know we're not, then we start yep. picking other people apart to find something yeah. wrong with them so we can justify the fact that we're not right. right. Yeah. True. Psych 101. Huh. I'm pretty sure that was in the book somewhere back in the day. <laughs> For the law having a shadow of good things to come, the law, having a shadow of good stuff that was coming, amen, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. No matter how many sacrifices they made, they could never make them perfect. They could just kind of hide it for a while. Just push it aside, amen. Move it out of the way. All right, verse uh, 9 and 10. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, mm -hmm. the rules of the law, that he may establish the second. He's taken away the first covenant, fulfilling that so that we can move into the second, the new covenant. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. I mean, how many times have we, have we read this and heard it read and preached it and still don't believe it? And are still antichrist, still thinking it's something I got to do. There's still more left for me to, uh, you know, to finish that Jesus didn't do a good enough job. He's telling us how we became sanctified, or set apart, or positioned in Christ, in God, and who it was that offered Himself for our sanctification. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 10, verse 14. For by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Now we, now we know we're sanctified, right? Now we're finding out we're perfect. Forever. We've been perfected forever. Yes. I mean, how does that make you feel? Yes. I'm, I'm special. Jesus, Lord. I mean, I'm feeling pretty special. Yes. Pretty special. Yes. I'm perfect. That's right. Amen. Don't judge me. That's what my granddaughter always says. Don't judge me. Mm -hmm. She's right. She's a believer. That's right. Don't judge me. I'm perfect. That's right. Forever. Forever. Perfected. Yes. Forever. What do you think, Caleb? It's good stuff, right? It's good news. Yeah. Amen. See, we ought to leave here feeling really positive and affirmed, yes. amen, by the Word of God. We should leave here like we're carrying a load of new rules, right. amen, that's going to keep us all bummed out and, uh, and restricted and, and freaked out for the next week till yeah. we get back for some more. Praise the Lord. Good news ought to be good news. Yes. Praise the Lord. Perfection is not going to come by keeping rules. It won't come by the law. Amen. By observing or adhering to uh, a set of rules. It won't come by religion. We've been sanctified by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Period. Have been. Past tense. Done. Finished. Praise the Lord. That one offering has forever, forever perfected those who are in Christ. That is the Word of God. It's not wishful thinking. It's not, gee, be nice for us. That, that is what it is. Sin is no longer the issue. Faith is the issue. Yep. Can you believe? It? Because if you can't believe it, you're going to struggle with all the rest of it. Right. Doesn't mean you're not saved. Right. Just means unless you really believe this, you're going to struggle with all the other. Yep. It's simple. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. We've made it complicated. All right, Romans seven, uh, verses one through six. See, I, now I've said this before, but as far as God's concerned, 
you know, in, a, in the metaphorical way of looking at Scripture, there's only been two people, two men. Adam and Jesus. You were either in Adam or you're in Christ. Amen? We were born in Adam. We get born again into Christ. So there's, in that sense, there's only been two people, two men, as far as God's concerned. Because we're judged in one or the other. It's not my righteousness. I didn't do anything to be a sinner. I just got born. Now I perpetuated that reality most of my life. But I didn't have to do anything. I, I was just a sinner because I was born into Adam. I was born in the human race. Yes. Fallen. Yes. So when I got born again, I didn't do anything to become righteous. Right. I just got born into the right Adam. Right. The last Adam. Yes. God looked at me before as a sinner because I was born in iniquity. Shaping, you know, in that. When I got born again, now all he sees is Jesus. That's what makes it fair. Because otherwise, if he hadn't come, that would have been a raw deal for everybody. Because we didn't ask for this. We just got it. Right? So he comes to make it right. How does he make it right? He comes to die in that first man's place so that we could get into the second man, Jesus without doing anything but believing. Just being born again. Praise the Lord. Alright, so, now you, know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lives. But if the husband is dead, she's loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband is dead, she's free from that law, so that she is not an adulteress, though she be married to another man. Right. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Praise the Lord. What do you say? How you got saved is how you live. By faith. You believed. Praise the Lord. See, the first Adam, who was temporal, he wasn't eternal. God told him he's going to die. He didn't, you know, we say, well, he didn't die. Well, he did die eventually. And then there's the second, the Lord of heaven. Yeah. So if we only have these two guys to choose from, yeah, I mean, it's not difficult to figure out who the old creation would be. Yeah. Right? The old creation, obviously, was Adam, the first Adam. So in Romans 7, Paul is telling us that the law has dominion over somebody as long as they live. If the old creation is still alive, then the law has dominion over us. Right? So if you're not born again, you're still under the old creation. The law still has an impact. It still impacts you. You've got to do all that stuff in order to be acceptable to God. Or you've got to get born again. You've got to die and be born again. So, if we're still preaching to the old creation, we're preaching to the wrong person. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. Paul says we are dead to the law and alive unto God through Jesus Christ. If we reckon the old man to be dead, then we're free from the law. Yeah has no power over us, has no, nothing to do with us. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 7. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 7. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness, having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. Praise the Lord. Can you go back to verse 5? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Imagination comes from the word imagine, image, right? Imagination comes from image. So we have images, amen, in the way that we think. These images have been set up in our minds by teachings we've had, experiences we've had, amen, things we've received through ministry, even well-meaning preachers, amen, have not taught us that our old self is dead, but taught us basically that we're dying, and sometime in the future God's going to do something for us. These are images. Amen? All right, look at Revelation chapter 2, verses 26 through 29. Revelation 2, 26 through 29. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. What? Keep his works. What's that mean? Believe in the finished work. Amen. To him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall, be, uh, shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Back to verse... Uh, well, just remember this. Just remember verse 20. Okay? I will give him the morning star. So now this scripture is... It's like multifaceted. It, 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 it deals with a lot of possible uh, applications. Past, present, future. Amen. But for us, in the context of what the Holy Spirit is saying to us this morning, the nations God wants to give each of us to rule over are imaginations, condemnations, denominations. Yes. Praise the Lord. These are the multitudes of nations that God would break with the rod of His authority. That authority comes from Jesus' finished work. And it brings victory over nations that are doing battle between our ears. Yes. Praise the Lord. We defeat these nations by the rod of His power and authority. And the truth that comes by keeping His works unto the end. Because Jesus is our destination. Yes. Praise the Lord. Second Peter 1, verse 19. A couple of scriptures here and we'll wrap up. Second Peter 1 and verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. Remember he just told us about the morning star? Yes. He'll give you the morning star. That's the day star is the morning star. A more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until this realization comes. Until you really understand what God has done through Christ in your life. When that dawns on you, it's a star. It's a bright light. It's the revelation that changes everything. We have been delivered from a kingdom of darkness into His dear Son, the day star, light, revelation, the morning star. Amen. Last scripture, Romans 117 again. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now faith is the substance. Now faith is the substance. Not the type, not the shadow. Now faith's substance is Jesus Christ. The righteous 
The justified live by Christ, not by laws. Right. Amen? Yes, amen. Therein the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Jesus is faith. Yes. The substance, faith substance is Jesus Christ. Yes. We're not living by rules. We're not living by regulations. We're living by yes. Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Amen. Yes. That resonate with anybody besides me I'm telling you we, we li we're living by Christ yes. in Christ That's through right. Christ by Christ my faith is just simply Jesus Christ I don't have to build up a bunch of faith to get a miracle it happens in Christ all I gotta know is I'm in the beloved I am in Christ amen and I have the giant stuff yes. it belongs to me yes. oh. Praise the Lord. No weapon formed against this guy can prosper. Hey, man, who's going to fight with God? Who wants to mess with the Lord? If I know who I am, I'll talk to the devil just like I'd talk to any thief on the street. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. See, I, I you can get scared, but I ain't afraid of nothing. You know what I mean? Amen. God is for me. Who can be against me? What are they going to do? Kill me? You know what you say in the Marine Corps? They can kill you, but they can't eat you. Praise the Lord. I'm going to go on. I mean, I'm not going to end. Praise the Lord. That's right. Hallelujah. Too tough to eat. Is this good news? I mean, we need to leave here thinking, whoa, it's good. This is good. Everything is good between me and the Lord. So I can kind of work on the other stuff, amen, as I need to. But all i got to keep reminding myself is you may not like me today, but God is good. God, and i got a good thing going, amen. Everything is good with Him. He loves me. He thinks I'm perfect. He's got my picture on His refrigerator, amen. He's got, he, he's got me, man. He loves me. It's good. That old guy, that other guy, as Kim would say, BC, deader than a hammer. Amen. Dead. Does not exist as far as God's concerned. Amen. Give him one more big hand clap. Praise God. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. Are special. Special. Praise God. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.